so the referee holly davidson from scotland the television match official neil Patterson, who also represents the scottish union although i know his roots are from northern ireland so as you perhaps might pick up there with one or two of the images you've seen and the odd wobbly camera we can do nothing about that it is blowing very hard indeed england playing from right to left katie daly mclean gets us underway and there we will have the first line out and uh, what a way to start for england three seasons in the space of 20 odd days for england it's a fairly similar story for ireland of course remember the spring-like sun three weekends ago at the foot of the pyrenees then we had the freezing snow at murrayfield today it's wind although we do have no sunshine which is rather good to see leanne riley there just feeding it on and sarah mckenna getting straight into the action promising start this for england hunter pops it up there to fleetwood absolutely crucial here for ireland that they get their first time tackles and bursting through there was lark davis good start for her riley out to daly mclean scattering the space here for breach breach held up a meter out well an opening minute without blemish for england ireland know that for a whole variety of reasons they have to be wary in these first few minutes the game could so easily get away from them if they're not careful riley feeds the ball out daly mclean has a go herself that was an important tackle there at the moment this irish defensive line holding up well leanne riley just calling for a bit of support the sarah burn in there also you can see poppy cleal with four on her back now who is it this time driving up to the line still at the moment being held out and that time it's held up well a promising start from england but you have to admire the uh, the spirit in the irish camp that was tremendous defense it was good defense wasn't it it was a yeah strong start for england pretty decent kickoff and get the clean ball from the line out and then runner after runner after runner from england lark davies going through the first tackle but the second tackle coming in but on their line Ireland holding firm, aren't they? England aren't doing anything too complicated just yet. But they've got a scrum here again, haven't they? Attacking scrum on the Irish line. Yes, what an attacking platform this is. Leanne Riley plays her club rugby for Harlequins there with a put in. It's a very solid English scrum being controlled at the base there by the captain, Sarah Hunter. Just creeping their way towards the Irish line. And you can see here Hunter's trying to take it all the way up to the try line. And it is the captain who gets the score. Her 29th test try. And Hunter be really pleased with that. But like all good captains, all good number eight. Congratulations her forward pack for that. England Scrum has come under a bit of attack the last couple of games. They would be working on that and Hunter controlling the ball so well. As a former number eight, I can tell you it's not their easiest skill and she controls that so well. Kind of what a great platform. The scrum staying low throughout Ireland just could not do anything about that. Yes, it's very difficult to overstate just how tough that skill is for a number eight. We've seen in uh, all levels of the game, perhaps the, uh, the England men, we look at how they're at the moment trying to convert an open side flanker into a number eight. And that is one of the skills that we know is so difficult to take and get come to terms with. But there we saw the experience of Sarah Hunter and so too there Emily Scarrett. Not an easy day for kickers. No, not at all. I'm just going back to number eight specialization i spend many hours dribbling the rugby ball backwards and forwards up and down a rugby pitch and uh to its funny shape it's yeah it's definitely not easy Martin. so how will ireland respond to that seven points down after just four minutes driven up there by the saracen poppy cleal daily mclean the ball being lost and lost forward there by yes, Sarah Beckett Sarah. just on the shoulder of uh, 
daily McLean. You can see their intent. Katie, she loves these wide passes, but she also loves these little sort of tip on passes. And Beckett's been such a strong carrier for England over the last couple of games, but just lost the ball there. Yes, it's becoming quite a settled back row there of Hunter, Fleetwood and Beckett. Crouch! Vines! There she is, Sarah Beckett. Her brother is the uh, former England under 20 and now Jersey Red Charlie Beckett. Once again, the supremacy of that England pack. Taken forward by uh, Katie Fitzhenry. Here's Naupu. Wife of George Naupu, remember him, who became something of a Connacht legend. Had a couple of stints at the club in Galway. Fed along there by Catherine Dane. Ireland will just be looking here to go through a few phases, get the ball in hand, grow the confidence after the early setback. Out there to Aoife Doyle. Doyle deputising here for Bevan Parsons, who's quite a talent at just 18. But by and large, it's not a young Irish side, is it? It's not, you know, there's um, half the team, nearly half the team are age 28 or over. There's only three or four players Offside. under the age of uh, 25. So it's not a young team by any means. No, Opie definitely playing at 36 still out there, but I'll give you playing some of their best rugby. A little bit of indiscipline there from England. That was a soft penalty to give away. Coming offside. Vicky Fleetwood, the guilty party. And Kiahan can't find touch. Sarah McKenna gets it into touch. And uh, these sort of conditions, it's pretty heavy underfoot. There's a lot of wind out there. And uh, if you know what I mean, it makes the pitch that little bit bigger. Yeah, I know. Well, I used to think that every time I saw a pitch, look how big it feels. But um, but yeah, it's it's really tough. I mean, from a, from a distance, the pitch looks quite nice at the moment, but it's had so much, or like a lot of the country, so much water on it, it's going to be uh, really difficult for players today. Tina Maloney, the island hooker, going short with that throw. That's a smart move. That was Fitzhenry, just outside the England 22. Fed along there by Catherine Dane, on to Claire Keahan. Just mopping it up there was uh, Edel McMahon, who was the player of the match in the win against Scotland. Up, Mark. And you can just see there just how awkward that was to deal with for Abby Dow. But that's uh, pinpoint stuff from Ireland, just applying a bit of pressure here to England. Beautiful yep. kick, wasn't it? Just turning round yeah, England right on their corner now. Yeah. England don't have this pressure very often, so pressure throw for, for Lark Davies. There was Old Croft. Here's Beckett. No, 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 no. Another carry from Old Croft who flies the flag for the Yorkshire Rose here, ball, ball, having learned her rugby at Scarborough. Brought forward there by Delaney. Just inside the England 22. That time it was Judy Bobbitt. One of the Leinster players in this island side. It's been a good bounce back, this from Ireland. There's Naupu. One of the most experienced players playing here for Ireland. Naupu, now 36. McKenna just applying a bit of pressure there, but uh, Ireland retaining possession. A bit of a knock on there by England in the tackle. Yeah, England not giving them a comfortable ride at all, are they? Pressurising them in every single moment. Well, the pressure coming through there from Emily Scarrett and then Leanne Riley on her counterpart, but knock on in the tackle because Ireland another opportunity. Crouch! You've seen the conditions here, Kath. Roll the clock back a bit, go back to your England captaincy days. 
what do you tell the team how do you play the game how does it differ on days like today in these conditions I think when it's like this just not to try anything too complicated you know particularly start the game you know coming a bit cl closer use your forward runners build that platform don't try and go wide too early yes we talk about the wind and um it's swirling a bit, but essentially it's blowing towards the camera, so largely across the pitch, which is perhaps why, or illustrated by Claire Kearhan's attempt to go for touch over on the far side. She was kicking pretty much directly into that breeze. That's Sarah McKenna, the Saracen, earning a 31st cap today. She's been really on form, Sarah McKenna, after um danielle waterman retired it's like who's gonna who's gonna take that 15 shirt she's a lovely player mckenna and really knows when to come into the line well we saw an absolute commitment there it was perhaps a little bit optimistic to go for the long throw but then the ball lost forward there referee was already playing an advantage to ireland kira griffin just getting a bit of a bit of attention time off yeah, it's just come. It's just going to be up here. Yes, Griffin. we talk about the conditions here. Sorry, Kath, but uh, you do need some perspective. It's remarkable that we're getting any sort of top-level sport on in Doncaster at the moment when you consider just going back to the middle of November. This really was at the epicentre of the first flooding crisis of the winter and more than 1,000 people were displaced from their homes in the Doncaster area with the the River Don not so much breaking its banks but simply the water levels going over them and um, there were some shocking pictures in this area so the very fact that we're playing on a bright sunshiny day and yes it's blowing a bit but uh, the underfoot conditions standing up remarkably well here at uh, Castle Park. It is a stunning facility. This is the home of the Doncaster Knights. So second flight rugby, which we know for all sorts of reasons, has been in the news over the course of the last week or so. But look at that. Doncaster, South Yorkshire at its finest. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful sunshine. Yeah, and, and I know the um, Red Roses, the team, they do playing here it does create a nice atmosphere and uh, there has been a bit of chat hasn't there about capacity and staging capacity but they do put put on a good good welcome here at Doncaster yes the box office closed sold out of tickets by the middle of the week and the encouraging signs if you're thinking of looking for a ticket for England's next match which is at the Twickenham stoop in a fortnight's time against Wales we understand already in excess of 8,000 tickets have been sold so uh, don't waste any time if you're umming and erring a bit so it's Catherine Dane with a put in decent running line that time from Fitzhenry Fleetwood there with the tackle that time there's Lindsay Pete, one of the veterans in this Irish team. Driven forward by the captain, Kira Griffin, up to the edge of the 22. Well, it's been turned, perhaps, by England. They've got the penalty. I think that's uh, Lindsay Pete down, isn't it? I'm just going to say after her run. Lindsay Pete just still on the ground at the moment getting some attention but Ireland have built up a bit of possession haven't they in some phases at the moment still in this England half yeah and Riley chewing the cud with uh, Dana McLean yes it was a tremendous opening minute from uh two or three minutes from England but you have to admire the way Ireland have buckled down here and um, they've come back quite nicely have yet to really threaten the England try line but at the same time they're keeping England honest 
There we go. Lovely. They look happy, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Let's take a look, shall we, at uh, the opening try from the England captain, Sarah Hunter, and just consider the skills that are involved with controlling the ball at the base of the scrum. Well, the sort of thing she's got to think about there, because, I mean, of course, look, the ball's not spherical for starters, but there are other issues. No, she's got to be aware of, you know, what's happening in the, in the scrum in front of her. Is it, is it, are there players in front of her staying low? Are they staying bound? She's got to be aware of any sort of Irish players coming around, the Irish scrum half. She's got to be aware, is the, is the scrum still, still moving forward? Where is the try line? As soon as you get near that line, she's got to get on that ball before, before any Irish players can legally then come in and get on the ball. So she does that really, really well. She's really, really honed that trade um, over the last few years. She is exceptional about it. I used to have a bit of a, a bit of an air of excitement with a scrum that close to the line, uh, coupled with a nervousness and the, and the kind of voice of Graham Smith, our forwards coach in, in my era, telling me to control that ball. <laughs> yes, it's good to see that um, Lindsay Pete is now sat up. But um, as the replacement loose head, Laura Feely comes on to earn her 16th cap for Ireland but as with all injuries really from uh, the shoulders up every precaution is taken yeah it's a real shame for, for Ireland Lindsay Pete is such an experienced player really strong player and a a leader within this team and we already saw that before she injured the, the influence and the impact she can have as a, as a ball carrier through the old drills to keep themselves warm. Yeah, I think she took a bit of a knot somewhere around about shoulder height, but I think now it looks rather more like uh, the knee, which is uh, becoming rather more the issue. So Lindsay Pete in the wars. Good Yorkshire crowd in. It is a venue which has uh, has served England pretty well. They won both of their previous two test matches here. First one back in uh, 2018 when they took on Canada. Then a November match and they won by 27 points to 19. And then England came here for last season's Six Nations and beat France by 41 points to 26. So. Katie Daly McLean, former captain, took them to the world title when they beat Canada at uh, the Stade Jean Bois in Paris. Which is uh, central for everything that the Red Roses do. Well, there you go. I guess those aren't the statistics which matter the most, but uh, they do tell us quite a lot that 12 minutes into the match, England may have got the only try, but Ireland have come back very strongly indeed. They've retained possession really well, haven't they, in space, as we see Lin Lindsay Peet being stretched off. Never a good sight to see, isn't it? Oh, Rugby hopefully should be back up on her feet. So Katie Daly McLean, largely with the benefit of the wind, sets up the line out just inside the England half. What will Lark Davis do with that one? She's probably learned her lesson with the one to the tail. Paul. That worked very nicely. Look at this powerful drive from England. Well, this is super stuff. It's too legal, Sarah. Well, one or two question marks there about... Uh, Clarna Maloney, whether she was legal. Oh, and here goes Scarrett. This is reminiscent of that running line, which led to the winning try against France. There's Oldcroft onto the captain. Good offload onto Lark Davis. England back onto the front foot. Out there from right, Daly McLean. And the 
white jerseys out wide. McKenna, the fullback. And in the corner goes Abby Dow. Dow with a fourth try in three matches in this championship. That was a lovely try. Emily Scout with these that try scored because she left one of her boots the other side of the pitch, but it was beautiful, wasn't it? Started with that really lovely ball from the forward pack. Kept lovely low in that ball. And then we see it again, Amber Reed, Emily Scarrett combination that, as you said, Martin, works so well against France, making ground against Ireland. They link up so well, don't they? Beautiful hands from Amber Reed. And that was almost a good old-fashioned scissors, wasn't it? <laughs> it was a scissors, yeah. <laughs> the one backs me, I used to know, Martin. <laughs> and then Sarah McKenna again coming in, creating that extra person, and Abby Dow just has to dot down on the end, doesn't she? They'll be pleased with that, England, after all that possession, all that territory that Ireland had. England take the opportunity, don't they? <coughs> well, Emily Scarrett having to redo her bootlace hut, bootlaces after just 14 minutes. <laughs> Getting old now, isn't she? Having a little break, Skaz, after that long run. <laughs> yes, the two, uh, two of the more experienced hands there having a chat. Emily Scarrett and Katie Daly McLean there, having a bit of a personal battle, if you put that in inverted commas, over point scoring for England. Emily Scarrett now up to 541 points for England. Katie Daly McLean 537. But the wind might just be helping a little bit, looking on the upside. Well... No, it's not, she's not started it. She's not started it. Well, the Irish reacting to the first movement of Scarrett. That was a glorious strike. It hasn't got there. But... She knew she had to deal with the wind there, so it was a bit like uh, a, bit a Tiger Woods yeah. three-wood stinger, yeah. keeping it low. She was allowed to pick it again, David saying she hadn't, David was saying she hadn't started her run up. I think the ball had moved before. So England leading by 12 points to nil. A rare error there from the captain, Lady McLean, carried forward by Sarah Beckett, the Harlequin. Driven forward by Poppy Cleal, one of the two Cleals involved with England, her sister Bryony, there's Scarrett. Quite unusual, isn't it? Scarrett trying to say that the ball was charged down in the air. It's been judged to have gone straight out, so come back for a, let's have a look. Numbers and in. Well, there were Irish fingers near it. Knowing Emily, I don't think she's a sort of player that would uh, would make something up, give her the benefit of the doubt, but needless to say, the referee's the right decision anyway, so it's an island throw. He might have given her the benefit yeah. of the doubt, She's but I don't the think the officials have. Hooker, no, stay on your mark. So, Same Cleaner mark. Maloney, who plays at club rugby in England. Tied it up by Judy Bobbitt. Here's the captain, Kira Griffin, getting a bit of help there from Aoife McDermott. Ireland find themselves in, inside the England 22 again. Ball is out and lifted. Play on. It's there for the scrum half day. Kiahan. Powerful carry forward by Naupu.
at the moment the England defensive line holding up well all crop that time with the tackle no poof firing the pass out ball went backwards feely it was securing possession for Ireland so they've still got the ball but they're about 10 meters further back than they were advantage side number three Sarah Byrne coming in from the side there so we've got the penalty advantage yep. referee still playing quite a long advantage so we will now come back for the penalty it was the Bristol Bear Sarah Byrne coming in from the side Okay, is that after the ball? So again, England okay. really pressurising everything, aren't they? Ireland retaining that possession again. Amber Reid and, uh, and Maloney. A few things to say to each other. Two. Two. I don't want to see anything after the ball, okay? Are you okay? Can I ask you to just look into step? I will, but I need your girls to come in quicker as well. Not much in that really, was there, Martin? Good on you. Yeah. Keep that gap. The gentle touch Girl, being in. applied by Holly Davidson, the referee. And here she is again, Fina Maloney, stolen the line out by England. Here goes Hunter. Straight into Linda Chungang. Pressure! Daly McLean gets it away, but doesn't find touch. Just finds Ipa Doyle. Poppy Cleal coming across to cut down the island wing. It's there for Dane. Reaching the end of the opening quarter. Kia Han. Long pass out. Chance now for Emma Considine, but she's cut down very early. England very efficient with their first time tackles and securing possession and winning the penalty. Holding off. I was just going to say that Ireland have been quite clinical. They haven't made many errors really, allowing them to retain that possession, but just Captain. holding onto the ball in that breakdown. Can you just make sure that there's no one in front of the runner? In the okay. They have seen threats from some of the players, Irish players, Considine there, no clue being a threat every time she's got the ball. Double tackle there from England, and it was Vicky Cornbrook who got herself locked over the ball. And once again, that powerful driving ball walking its way into Ireland territory. Delia McLean pops it over, that's for Scarrett. Oh, and she couldn't gather it. Nearly Perfect. bounced up yes, perfectly yes. for her, didn't it? Number three. The mold. Lovely chip over from Daly McLean. The ball bounced up too perfectly. She wasn't quite expecting it. Yeah, it was. I think it was one of those where. If she'd been half a yard quicker, she, she would have got there on the full toss. She might have been better just holding back. Girl. Open. This is your mark. Another chance, though, for England. Lark Davis from the Loughborough Lightning Club. Starting in preference to Amy Cocaine today. Once again, the powerful drive, but the referee's blown her whistle. Let's just okay. listen in. For me, it's in seven's hands. I've asked you to break away and you've not. Just because she's showing it doesn't mean that the ball hasn't been I'm not taking it, though. Can you just shout a bit louder? Yeah. yeah. Vicky Fleetwood getting a little bit exasperated. Yeah. 
So it looks like referee is saying actually the ball needs to be transferred. See Fleetwood still got hands on that ball. Decent solid scrum picked up at base by Capeless. There really is no compromise with some of these hits today. England secure another penalty. The Ireland player getting herself a little bit isolated. Slaps on the back there for Lark Davis. Holding on again, wasn't there a couple of question marks about whether there might have been a knock-on in that contact area, but that's irrelevant now. Yep. Am I keeping it just lying on their knees? Yeah. They're, they're putting pressure on our player on the ground. Okay. The coach? Sure. Hey, please carried out really well then, didn't she? She's been on really good form this tournament. Davis fires it at Old Croft. Familiar theme here, Fleetwood's got it tucked under her arm this time a couple of meters out the mall has gone down yep i'm all taken in well island will get the put in if it's not immediately available it's a bot on this one more yeah three's happy so davidson saying the ball was not the mall was not successful there for his island Ireland putting the scrum, so see Fleetwood has the ball there now. This time they transfer to Lark Davies. Ireland did enough in defence to stop the ball from being grounded. Fine. Set. 25 minutes gone, England with two tries already, leading by 12 points to nil. Look at that from England. There's the ball. A few blades of grass between it and the Irish line. And the penalty being awarded. Reward for that terrific scrum. She had to give a penalty away, but Captain Kira Griffin somehow managed to get onto that ball to stop the try. Such power from the England pack then. Griffin got a hand on the ball before the ball was out of the scrum. Unbound from the scrum. Now you rather get the idea this won't be going any further than the feet of Sarah Hunter. Now the referee urging her to use it. That's good from the Irish holding them up. Daly McLean. In comes Scarrett. The offload, and Jess Breach just held up. The Irish defence holding firm, but for how much longer? There's the ball again, who this time? Fed up from right to Scarrett. Scarrett, and into the corner goes Jess Breach. Yet another test try. She has got a remarkable strike rate. That her 22nd test try. And this, just her 13th cap. Yeah, she's definitely a try scoring machine. She loves scoring tries. She'll take a couple of attempts though. Go through here. Kayfis comes to really well then. Stops that first attempt from Jess Breach. Irish defence had to work so well but they run out of players really Delaney couldn't get the tackle in on breach goes in for yet another another try for England but that's a difference at the moment isn't it England have been able to take three opportunities in that 22 Ireland have not been able to transfer any of their territory or possession into points Well, England haven't conceded a point in the championship since France got back within six points towards the end of the match down in Poe. 
Andy Scarrett there just coming over that one, just trying to force it. The conditions out there for place kicking really are very tough. And Emily Scarrett, who's one of the best in the business of the kicking tee, she's got kicking percentages in league and test rugby round about 60%. Ireland were just so bunched in their defence, really, then, weren't they? Well, gathered by Cleal, who just knocks uh, McDermott back on her heels. There's Riley. That was to Amber Reed. Powerful hit. Cleaner Maloney's certainly up for this, isn't she? Daly McLean. Little offload out of the back of the hand to Sarah Byrne. Riley. On there to Amber Reed. Old Croft just getting rid of the ball, but he's gone forward. Ireland forcing the knock on. Yeah, Maloney's been known for her footwork and attack in this tournament, but look at that hit on Sarah Byrne. That's not a common sight, is it? See Byrne go backwards in the tackle. Same height, girls. Let's keep that space. Another really strong hit. Forcing the turnover then. These little battles at Ireland we've got to take confidence from now. I well, certainly enjoyed a lot of possession and territorial advantage. Just haven't uh, quite had the killer punch that England have had so far. That's Chukang. And from Dane. Considine. There's McDermott. Poppy Cleal there just trying to rip the ball loose, but. It goes for Ireland. Sarah Byrne was very swiftly out of the starting blocks. England defensively living a little bit on the edge there. Sarah Byrne was... Uh... She's quick, though. I don't know if she's that quick. Yeah, good to <laughs> we saw that in France, didn't we? She looked like she'd scored a scorching try, only, only for it to be... Uh, rubbed off because of a bit of obstruction in midfield. Yeah, I think it was Beckett, wasn't it, that, that went through? That's right. Oh, Sarah Byrne went bursting through, rather like Emily Scarrett on that occasion. She did tremendous footwork from Byrne, absolutely fantastic. But Ireland now find themselves back in the England 22. They have to use this platform now, don't they, Martin? They've had, you, as you say, they've had possession had territory, just not been able to finish it off at all yet. So Ireland, victories in their opening two matches. Oh, and that time it went through the hands of Griffin, and here she goes. Sarah Byrne, living up to her billing. Riley out to Daly McLean. Amber Reid doing well there to shrug off all challenges. Daly McLean getting it quickly through the hands to Scarrett. Chance to run for a moment there for McKenna. England have got the ball to within 10 metres of halfway. Beckett. Daly McLean. That was well picked up by Poppy Cleal. Daly McLean. Oh, Considine has missed it. And Abby Dow is bearing down on it. If she can gather it. Well, Lauren Delaney has done rather well there. Considine overcommitted herself. And just for a moment, there was a chance for Abby Dow. Thank you. 
So Ireland having to start all over again from a metre outside their own try line. And that in the uh, windy conditions we've got here at the moment, just about the toughest touch line to kick to. Touch is Dow again. Riley's got her hands on it. On here to Cleal. Neat little pass. That was on to Lark Davis. There's Riley again. Beckett looking for the offload of Fleetwood, but Fleetwood couldn't gather it. Considine tries to run out of defence. Both of those touch lines are a very long way advantage. away for Ireland at the moment. Yeah, she's legal. It's gone forward by White first. Yes, we're going to come back for the knock on from uh, Vicky Fleetwood. Thank you. It looked like it was going to be a fantastic take, didn't it, from Considine? Just, just slightly misjudged it. Such a strong wind here. It's really, really difficult for them. Abby Dow pouncing on the ball. But Delaney does really well, doesn't she? She not only gets on the ball, but she stops, she stops taking the ball over her own try line, which would have been a, uh, a scrum to England. And then uh, just a knock-on from Fleetwood at the end. There's Abby Dow. She studies mechanical engineering at an Imperial College in London, having... Learned her rugby at Maidenhead. Yeah, and she's one of those players that's not actually contracted at the moment, so she's not paid to play rugby at the moment, unlike many of her, most of her other counterparts, teammates on the pitch at the moment. Yeah, just talk us through that situation, because here, let's draw a comparison. We've got the Irish players who are the best part-time players. There are a few who do play in, uh, in the league here in England, but... By and large, the English players are now fully professional. Yeah, that's right. There's 20, 28 players now, England players, that are, are, can call themselves full-time full -time rugby players, full-time professional rugby players. Um, so there's just a couple of players that come in and out of that squad, Abby Dow being one of them, who's been a real you know, strength for England but didn't get one of those places at the beginning of the season. So she'll have to have a decision to make if she gets offered one, actually, um, rugby or, or her career and her studies. So it's, it's quite difficult for this team. Once again, the immediate shove, and Ireland have done rather well to retain possession. Katie Daly McLean there in with the tackle. Ball just being fed back by Feely. Dane gets it into touch. Did it flick off uh, a few England fingers, perhaps? Yeah, not for me. What's that? Is that touch? No, not for me. Not for me, says the referee. Yeah, always good there for me, though. Certainly Ireland think it did. No. Cancels out the one from Scarra earlier, perhaps. Mark Davis finds the captain, Sarah Hunter. But that's the, uh, the second time they've had problems there. Number four, obstruction. Uh, the last four minutes of the first half. Here's Claire Keahan. Yeah. Uh, about four to go. Yeah. Yeah, so Cleo has done for obstruction. So she steps in round behind Sarah Hunter. Look here, Sarah Hunter comes down and Poppy Cleal steps in behind her, obstructing any Irish defenders wanting to <laughs> compete for the ball. And that was a little bit untidy. I think both hookers are not being particularly frightened by the wind, are they? It's certainly a fairly high-risk strategy to be going to the tail. It really is, isn't it? And the England line-out has been exceptionally good throughout this tournament. 100%, I think, leading into today's 
match. So Leanne Riley with the foot in, controlled there by the captain. On to Daly McLean. Here's Amber Reed. Daly McLean, the fullback's in the line. McKenna on to Dow. Dow gets through two tackles. Holcroft did very well to keep hold of that and to keep her feet. Daniel McLean, the inside ball. Lost forward, though, in the contact. That was Sarah McKenna. High. High tackle. Referee decides the tackle was high. Off goes Riley. There's McKenna inside to Fleetwood. Away. Amber Reed. That's the Cornborough. England doing well to keep the ball alive. Cleal takes it on. It's there again for Riley. Away for Lauren Delaney Advantage with away. a crucial intervention there for Ireland. Advantage for not rolling. England have a penalty advantage. Now can they push it up and over the line and get the ball down? Ireland up. pleading with the referee and saying it's held up. Four not rolling. But they will come back for the penalty. Number four, not rolling away. Penalty against Eva McDermott. Move her up, Claire. I'll put um, Ireland See if on the line. go for the all again off this line out. It's been working so well, hasn't it? Guys, the line is on. Guys, set up. The line is on. There's Lark Davis, the 25th cap today. Goes to the captain, Hunter. Here it is. Predictable. Well choreographed. Perfectly rehearsed. And they get the score. Vicky Fleetwood. So difficult to defend. Driving more like that, Martin. Once it's got going, once they've got the momentum going, it's virtually impossible. And England do it so well now. We hear about these talk about Amber Reed and Emily Scarrett and Katie Daly McLean's lovely flat passes but they Maul has become a real strength and signature of theirs no obstruction this time from Poppy Cleal Sarah Hunter steering controlling that Maul really lovely low body heights Fleetwood dots the ball down at the end really really solid from the Red Roses well whatever happens from here in that secures England's first point of the day, the try bonus. So one from four for Emily Scarrett. Well, they haven't been dominant for all of the 40 minutes. Far from it, England. But when they've had the ball inside the Island 22, they have been clinical. Half-time in Doncaster, England lead Ireland by 22 points to nil. So, all set to go. Let's see what Ireland can offer in this second half. They enjoyed... A lot of territorial advantage, a lot of possession, but perhaps they just lack the penetration, the sort of penetration there that Sarah Beckett hinted at as she took that ball at speed and burst her way through. Push, girls, push. There's Riley. Being ripped forward. Yeah, the ball being ripped forward there. I've got a bit of an update, actually, on Lindsay Pete, who we saw leaving one of the most experienced players in this Irish side. We understand she has been taken off to hospital, so a little bit concerning, but we do have to report that when she left here, she was, uh, she was sat up. But there's Laura Feely, who came on to replace Lindsay Pete, earning her 16th cap here for Ireland. 
terms of England, they've got the try bonus point, they've got the four tries, 22 points to nil up. Simon Mid Middleton, he'll be keen here to set targets for his team in the second half. Okay, time back if you don't do things like that, I guess it's quite easy for things to errors to start to creep in, lose a bit of direction. I was just going to say, actually, there were a few errors creeping in a little bit from the from the England team uh, towards the end of that first half, but they'll have their, their performance targets, you know, their KPIs, key performance indicators that they, they will want to reach in this game. Well, look at that from Ireland. Well, whatever was said during the half-time break, Appears to have had an impact, Adam Griggs, their coach. It's his third Six Nations in charge of the Ireland team. The Kiwi, who learnt his rugby through the uh, Canterbury Crusaders Academy, which I guess is the University of Oxford or Cambridge when it comes to rugby union. Ireland will be really pleased with that scrum, won't they? Forcing that England team to, England pack to break up. Lovely low body height. There's so many different battles throughout this pitch and the forwards will be really pleased with that. See if they can lift their team with that. Cleaner Maloney goes short. There is the ball for the scrum half, Catherine Dane. Dane has it now. Taken on by Fitzhenry, being held up by Daly McLean and also Amber Reid, but she's got to ground. Reid is over the ball. Reid being told to get her hands off it. This is Chungang. Oh, but then it's been lost forward in the contact, and it's Leanne Riley who has it. So England with a chance here to clear the ball upfield. Sarah Hunter, the captain that time. There's Riley, back to Daly McLean, and has plenty of time to pick a spot. Oh dear, and that was fumbled through the fingers, I'm afraid, of Aoife Doyle. Yeah, unfortunate for Ireland then, you can understand why Doyle went for it. Thank you. Ireland did pretty well there, didn't they? They had that strong scrum and they had a good, good more, but they just couldn't capitalise on it, could they? That arrow creeping in. She left it and might have gone out, straight out. Loose throw in there from Lark Davis. Once again, no shortage of ambition, despite the windy conditions. Dickie Fleetwood was very quickly out of the blocks there for the England defensive line. There's Capeless. Capeless, one of the Ireland players who plays her rugby in England for Harlequins. Harlequins ladies, one of the uh, strongest club sides in European rugby. Taken forward there by McDermott. That was neatly threaded through there by Dane. On to Griffin, the captain. There's Dane again, driven forward by Bobbitt. Again, it's an encouraging start here from Ireland, just through the fingers of Chungang, but it went backwards. Griffin. Once again, Kath, plenty of possession, but if it seems as if they don't just have the power or the speed of England and they're England forcing the knock on. Yeah, that's right. They're, they're using their forward runners, you know, a little bit like England do, but they're not, they're not gaining a huge amount of ground. England are happy just to fend. They're not putting too many players into that area. And although Ireland are retaining possession like on the most part, they're not, like they're not getting that real attacking threat through, and it's not, it's not making it difficult for this England defence at the moment. Yeah, certainly the question's been asked of the Ireland attack. Not the most demanding to answer. England making almost twice as many tackles in that first half as England, but England only missing three or four. Griggs looking on now. They're going to have to sort of think about how can they change this up. You know, they're using those runners, the forward runners, not really working. They did that beautiful kick in the first half that went into the corner. And I'm not someone that usually says this, but maybe they need to mix their attack up a little bit, use the boot a little bit, try and turn this England team around a bit. There we are, Simon Middleton on the left. 
ridden his manor, so to speak. Born and lives up in Pontefract. Just a little bit up the A1 and down the M62. Used to be a rather good rugby league player, did uh, Simon Middleton. Played for Castleford. That's just down the road as well. I can also bring you up to date with events down at the Arms Park where France, in fact it's just finished, France have beaten Wales by 50 points to nil so another victory for France in the Six Nations this weekend against Wales and that just reinforces the supremacy I think that England are enjoying here having beaten France on the only weekend down in Pope they did. France will look back on that game though with a few regrets. They had a lot of errors in that match. It could have been a could have been a different story, but England came away with a victory in another difficult match for Wales by their sounds. So Lian, Lian Riley with a foot in there, earning a 36th cap for England today. Young lady originally from Coventry, but now plays the rugby down in West London. Bailey McLean finding a bit of space. The ball sits up nicely for Doyle. Good chase from Abby Dow. As they say, the kick's only as good as the chase. Taken forward by Bobbitt. There's Dane out to Keahan. No way through in the midfield there for Pitts Henry. That was an uncompromising hit from Amber Reed. Chung Gang shrugging off the challenges there and then the good offload. Unto the captain there, I'm not sure she's holding up her own body weight. Away comes Cornbra, but that will be a penalty to Ireland and uh, Hunter, I think, the guilty party. Number nine. Well, in fact, it's. Uh, Oh, she said number nine, so she's referring there to Leanne Riley. Yeah, good for you. This was rather impressive from Chung Gang, who's quite a story herself. Came over to Ireland from Cameroon when she was just nine. She's currently working in. Uh, the health service back at home she's a student nurse and regularly puts in 13-hour shifts off the back of matches she's a really really strong player and she kind of reminds me a bit of a, of a, a Rochelle Clark the way she plays she's really really powerful really present around the pitch she's got some nice hands as well always looking for the offload Another change coming from Ireland Kira Cooney's on. Off goes Zipa McDermott. Peter Maloney. And he's playing against one or two of her club mates. She plays for Wasps. Well grabbed by Griffin. On there from Keahan. That's Fitzhenry. Well ripped by Sarah Byrne, getting the turnover for England. Oh, Hunter and Cleal just fighting over it, but the referee says the ball went backwards. Same message. Same message. Maloney not very happy there as she penalised for not rolling away and a little bit of chat. Nick says an extra. 10 meters hey, she's a spiky old character it looks good kill and clearly she had something to say as well there so, yes. i mean sometimes as a player it feels very difficult to be able to get out of that situation to be able to get out of that that tackle area the referees are so hot on it sarah Byrne does well doesn't she dislodge the ball then old crop rising high fleetwood pops it up to amber reed Reed presents it. There from Riley onto Daly McLean. There's Scarrett. 
Double tackle on Scarrett. Daly McLean just dummies. Here's Fleetwood. Which way this time from England? They have been ruthless today. McKenna coming in from fullback. Well, England have knocked it on. So a rare error in the Irish red zone. Use it! That has been a feature of today, Kath, that England have been quite comfortable leaving Use Ireland it. to have possession, but when they've had opportunities themselves, they've been pretty clinical. They have generally, haven't they? But there's just times now creeping in, lost the ball in the contact area, then that they won't they won't be happy. It's that tension to detail for this England team. Poppy Cleal there just swamping Cleaner Maloney. A bit of a hint of forward about it, that did. Never mind, the referee's happy. That was Feely back there from Dane. Kia handed well to get rid of that. Good catch over a shoulder coming from Jess Breach. Good chase though from Ema Considine. Riley, Daly McLean, no way through over there on the far side. That's Beckett. Considine with the tackle. Oh, Vicky Fleetwood coming at speed, but the run just a little mistimed. Couple of those, isn't there? You can see the intent there. I think Fleetwood would have been through if that ball had stuck. Another one of those offloads from Amber Reed. Always slightly behind her, wasn't it? Slightly behind Fleetwood. Oh, Difficult man. one to take. Yes, Vicky Fleetwood, originally from Nuneaton. I spent almost a decade as an England player. She'd reached 50 caps by 2015. Decent all round athlete. Used to be a hurdler. And played most of it in international career with a two on her back as well rather than the seven. England doing the foraging and getting the penalty. Yes, you talk about that transition from hooker to uh, back row. That is a bit of a theme in rugby union, but in, on many occasions tends to be the other way around. If we think of one or two players, particularly in the men's game, who start off in the back row, wind up as, as hookers. It's one of uh, Graham Smith's favourite pastimes, okay? converting back row Thank players you. into uh, into to front row players. Shauna Brown is on the bench. She was a uh, she was a back row player. Sarah Byrne, when she was younger, was a uh, was a back row player. He didn't he didn't get us all there. Taken down by White. Down by White. Lark Davis feeds it out to Riley. Here's Daly McLean. They still have it. There's Byrne in open play. A sight to behold. The little dummy and a skip coming from Leanne Riley. This is where England have been fairly clinical today. That was fabulous from Cleal onto Byrne. Byrne keeps the ball alive. Oldcroft, the young lady from Scarborough, powers her way on. No two holds her out. England within two metres of the Irish line. There is Riley. Riley feeds it out to Reed. What an interception. That was absolutely crucial for Ireland. No, don't play the night. Just take it on by Cooney. 
Now, can Ireland get their exit right? There's Chungang. No nine. Counter rock is good. It's good counter rocking there from England. Unplayable. Ireland will get the put in. Crucially. We'll just have a little breather. You just felt the tempo from England had really just lifted there. And you can see their sort of quick ball, quick recycling that we're used to. That interception. Brave, very brave thing to do right in your line, but crucial for Ireland to stop another try from England. So, three alterations. On comes Amy Kakei. She replaces Lark Davis. Also coming on, Shauna Brown. She's on for Sarah Byrne. And the other change comes at scrum half with Ian Riley giving way to Natasha Hunt. That, that is certainly one of the keenest contests at the moment within the England squad. Who is the first pick nine? It really is, isn't it? You know, Riley and Natasha Hunt are there. Both been playing so well, but there's hardly anything to call between them. Hunt started in that French game. Then you've got Claudine McDonald as well, that's really kind of chasing their tails at the moment as well. It's a really competitive position. Of course, competition is good, so when you've got three outstanding scrum halves in the extended squad, options there for Simon Middleton. In the bigger picture, when we look towards you know, next year, World Cup year, coaches always aim to have three, you know, three quality players in each in, in each position. Not everyone has that luxury, really. Well, Natasha Hunt certainly brings experience in Olympian, having played in the sevens in Rio and started the World Cup final as well. A bad clearance there from Dane, but it's taken there by Hunt straight into the action. That was meant for a captain. The ball still alive, though. It went backwards. No, Here's Hunt. No addition to the scores since half time, so we're almost through that third quarter. Ball's there. There's Hunt out to Daly McLean. Here's Fleetwood, who's been everywhere today. Hunt, Old Croft, what a player she's proving to be. She had almost two years out of the game with injuries. Oh, that's wonderful to Scarrett. Scarrett in space, always a dangerous combination, but then the pass has gone forward. Abby Dow. Well, I think the crowd have yet to realise they have now. Well, I guess if we are going to be uber critical, that is one that's got away from Emily, Emily Scarrett, which shouldn't have done. It has, hasn't it? It's really well worked from that time. Emily Scarrett looping round, get the ball, and then just, yeah, just going forward at the end. She'll be really disappointed with that. Yes, Emily Scarrett, the 2019 World Player okay. of the Year. It's going to be safe scrum. You Even the best make the odd mistake. And you must take the hit, OK? Yeah, yeah, Even Emily Scarrett is human. Up. Unbelievable. The power from the England scrum putting pressure on Ireland. But it's folded like a pack of cards, isn't it? Oh, the ball's in there somewhere. I think Ireland have got it. There it is.
Chung Jung that time making an important meter or so. Use it, nine. Catherine Day managed to use it. Hooks it into touch. She did rather well. Abby Dow with a quick throw in. Here's Hunt with space. Good tackle there from Pitts Henry. Here's Cleal. Bobbitt right in the thick of things. There's Hunt again. Daly McLean coming inside is McKenna. Well, England have had to wait a while in the second half, but eventually that try has arrived. Yeah, you feel that Ireland can only hold them out for so long, couldn't they? Sarah McKenna looking very happy, very pleased with herself with that try. Great quick throw in from Abby Dale. Taken on by Hunt. England still having to work hard in that breakdown area to get that ball out, and then McKenna just comes back in on an inside line off Daly McLean. Maloney couldn't get that tackle again against her, against her line of running in defence, who's having to defuck, having to turn, which makes it a really difficult tackle. Katie Daly McLean and Emily Scarrett having a good natter. It's not a great day for the kicking stats. The wind ensuring that. Look at that. 25% at the moment. Two posts oscillating and look at that. Wow. <laughs> but at least Emily can see the funny side of it. I don't think she'll be too concerned about her kicking stats today. The wind really taking the ball away, wasn't it? We we'll see Sarah McKenna again. Sarah McKenna comes into the line so well. See her so often, creating that extra player, and, and this time she gets to try herself. Really lovely player, knows the game very well, very good running away. So. Alterations from Ireland. Linda Chugang has gone off. Leah Lyons is on. And Clea Kiahan has been replaced by Larissa Muldoon. So Larissa Muldoon earns her 47th cap. That was taken rather well by Beckett. Hunt, Bailey McLean, the captain Hunter, tried to get it away. Feely it was, who secured it for Ireland. Here's Naupu, tackle from Fleetwood. First player, turned over. Into that final quarter of the match. Ireland will feel that this match owes them something. They have had prolonged periods of possession and also territorial advantage. They have lacked that little bit of punch, the necessary bite to get up and over the England try line. That's Bobbitt. Dane. Here's Muldoon. Rook is good. Play on. Capeless. Well and truly wrapped up by Sarah Beckett. Holding on. She's the first player there on her feet holding on. Yeah. Yeah, she's per she's Amber Reed there. Holding. Polly, we've got South for both teams. Okay, okay. White six. Good old crowd today, a 5,000 sellout. Green nine and green 11. First time that's happened for an England international. Number nine. Yeah, really positive steps. Martin, as you say, ticket sales going really well so far for the Wales game. I'm going to put the stoop two weeks' time. They're making some changes now as well to their own team. Yes, Nicole Cronin coming on at Scrum Hall. Also on is Hannah Tyrrell. There is Tyrrell. Looking a bit chilly, isn't she? 
Yeah, all done. And blow hard onto those hands. Who would be a winger in conditions like these, eh? Pardon? Who would be a winger anyway, I asked myself. <laughs> Sorry, wingers. Now, now. All wingers now, out now. there, I apologise. I started Kicker. on the wing. <laughs> I shall take the shovel off you before you stop digging. Before you keep on digging, I think. Here's Catherine Day. There you see the changes that have been made. Nicole Cronin coming on. Eva Doyle being replaced there by Hannah Tyrrell. Zoe Oldcroft we see going up there. She's become a real leader now in the lineouts with uh, Abby Scott out. There's a bit of a gap. I know Middleton's really impressed with Oldcroft and the development of her, her skills and her leadership. On there from Wall. Cronin feeds it out. Change of direction there from Muldoon. tackle from England so there's a penalty coming Hi. yes breach the player guilty there she is one try today to add to that long list 22 test tries she's got now starting to see a few more penalties aren't we creeping in actually from both sides white one white seven White 10 and White 15. Okay, seven well, Simon Middleton just ringing a few more alterations here. So it's a little bit clumsy from Jess Breach. Yeah, I don't hear any arguments about that penalty, is there? There's Emily Scott, the Harlequin. Also on is uh, Zoe Harrison, and also I think I called a view of uh, is the Taisha Harper on as well. Oh, that there we go, driven forward by Amelia Harper, one of the players from uh, Loughborough Lightning. We've got two Harpers on the bench for England. They're not related. Oh, and uh, the ball just fumbled into touch by Abby Dow. You guys are on the line. Not the uh, crispest of passes there. It's not my job. Emily yeah. Scott can get on the end of that. Here we go. Here's confirmation that the Taisha Harper. There she is wearing 17. Making her England debut, big moment for her, a psychology student from Loughborough University, originally from Salford, learned to rugby up at Eccles, which if you know your men's rugby is where the AJ Bell, the home of Sale Sharks is, so a good rugby postcode. Bobbitt presenting it there for the scrum half Cronin, Muldoon looks for a bit of space, Awkward one to deal with there for Emily Scott. Holly Green, yeah, it was a really tricky bounce again, wasn't it? Emily Scott, one of these players who's so talented. She's kind of too talented in a way that Middleton uses her as a real kind of useful player. She can cover fullback, she can cover fly half. I know that she would love to play in one position and really give that a go. Yeah, we talk about the succession plan for England. I guess Zoe Harrison coming on, she's just 21. She's a fly half specialist, and I know that the way England have been playing things a little bit in this championship, they've had almost a second pivot with Daly McLean playing at 10 and maybe Harrison starting at 12. But she's getting a chance here, a final run for 15 minutes or so. 
at fly half. She's quite a player, isn't she? She, she really is. We play really well at uh, Saracens and, uh, and Middleton. Really, you know, wants to perform now, today, what we're doing now. But he's really looking forward to the future as well, and and really giving Harrison time, sort of no, nurturing that position, whilst the likes of you know Daly McLean are still still alongside oh, her, and uh, no better mentor really. Good chase there by, oh, from Ima Considine. Here's Natasha Hunt. On to Oldcroft, who's been very industrious today. As I said, flying the flag with the white rose of Yorkshire today, the one Yorkshire woman in the England 23. No. Advantage. You're offside. You're offside. Penalty against uh, Kira Cooney. And Natasha Hunt is off and running there to Scarrett. Inside ball there to Cleal. Cleal sweeps it out wide. That was meant for Harrison. Off feet. England get another crack at it. Living just a little bit dangerously. And then I think under some pressure, Kakane maybe knocking it on that time. Yeah, no. So even if it's out, you must come from an onside position. Okay, so you're halfway up the uh, green scrub. So, Natasha Hunt. Natasha May Hunt taking that quickly. Really aware of where her teammates are and uh, nearly a beautiful pass out from, from Poppy Cleal. Well, that's what experience delivers. Eyes up, saw the opportunity, had the confidence to go. Nothing wrong with the pass there from Poppy Cleal. Muldoon. Good carry there from Katie Fitzhenry. Let's see in the last 12 minutes if Ireland can get off the mark. They have been smothered well by England here. They've had their chances, plenty of possession and territory. But England haven't given it an inch, really. Haven't missed too many tackles. <laughs> England went on their way to making it 14 points out of a possible 15. England's defensive record in the Six Nations Championships in recent seasons is quite remarkable. They've conceded just 137 points in their last 17 matches and 69 minutes of this. Now, that's an average of around eight points a match. Really impressive. You know, we talk about their attack, their attacking flair. We talk about the, the forward runners and attack. But, you know, their working defence is, is phenomenal. They don't give teams an inch, you know, wherever they are on the pitch. Muldoon just getting the kick away. There goes Abby Dow. Scott feeding the ball inside. Oh, it's been turned over by Ireland. That's now Upu. <laughs> well, now England have it. Grabbed by Amelia Harper. Who really is an out and out seven. Harper, another of the new names, earning you just a third cap here. She's just 19. Hold, hold, 17. Yeah, no. Well, Scarry got plenty of boots on that. Emma Considine just getting herself a little bit out of position. Abby Dow maybe just overcommitted herself, and the fullback's done quite well. Ireland's bid for a, for a win away 20. from home is going to go for another couple of weeks or so. The last one away from Ireland at Scotston last February. That against Scotland, of course. 
Garrett leads inside. Breach finds support from Emily Scott. There's Breach again. Harrison. England just getting a little bit untidy. It's a little bit of unsighted pass from Harrison. Ireland are just a little bit unlucky with perhaps the scheduling of this tournament. Bevin Parsons, we mentioned right at the beginning, the teenage star is uh, having to miss this game because of her school exams. She would have definitely caused a threat for this England team. Quite haven't got that finishing power, have they, Ireland? So England leading by 27 points. Still eight minutes to go. I think we've seen enough to decide who our Six Nations women's player of the match is. And uh, I think today, uh, carrying on a theme for her actually in this tournament, for her uh, for her work rate, is uh, that player there on the left packing down in the scrum, Zoe Oldcroft. Absolute workhorse. Well, she may well have committed an act of heresy for a Yorkshire woman yeah. by moving out of the county. She now plays her rugby down at Gloucester Hartbury, but she's a young lady from Scarborough. There she is. So Learned her rugby up in that part of the world. So impressed with her. She carries well, she tackles well. Her work rate is, is phenomenal. She leads well in the line out. She's really stepped up in that area of the game. And uh, it's not always seen that work there in, in the engine room for the second row, but uh, very impressed with her again today. Nicole Cronin being told the ball was out. Making life a little bit difficult for the Ireland team. Captain Griffin's got her hands on it. Kira Griffin captaining Ireland today for the 14th time. Oh dear, that was a bit clumsy from Larissa Muldoon. first saw Oldcroft play several years ago when she was playing for club team DMP and she was playing number eight in that game was really really impressed with her and it's quite nice to have seen her develop into the uh, player that she is today and uh, winning player of the match against Ireland. She has had injury problems she's been uh, she's had to dig deep and fight her way back as well hasn't she? And she really has and you know actually sometimes when that happens just proved to you how much you want something and that and that's really the case with Oldcroft. Hunt on there to Harrison. On there from Amber Reed. Little inside pass to the captain Hunter. There's Hunt. On there to read again. Always backwards. A little bit loose again from England. Harrison. Cutting through there, Amy Cocaine. Not held, put on. She's still going as the replacement hooker. Break! Get off! Get off! Harrison. Cleal. Ireland still defending with plenty of pride. That's Harriet Miller Mills. Hunt onto Harrison, and there is an Island player down. I think it may well be I'm a Considine. Sorry, do I think? In fact, it is no Oku, isn't it? Irish have tackled so well in this game, haven't they? Got to really praise their defence. Um, England have right? had to work, there's been some hard hits, there's going to be some sore bodies after this game. If you consider some of the score lines that England put against teams, they've really held them in this second half as well. Yes, the score line bears it out, but 
they missed a few in the first half which was telling but in the second half it has been a very plucky performance from the women in green it really has and taking confidence from two wins you think last year they won one game the whole year they didn't come off a, a very good season they're getting these two strong wins at the beginning of this tournament that game against scotland and then two weeks ago against wales had a really really good strong performance Yes, there is Sunny Naupu. Right, going all the way back to the start. Terrific beginning to the match with the captain scoring the first try and then first of a couple of tries for the wings. As easy as they come there for Abby Dow. And then over to the other side, not to be outdone. Jess Breach. And then one of the hardest and tireless workers in this England side. Vicky Fleetwood in the middle of the mass of white bodies there will re-emerge with the ball. So try bonus point before the end of the first half. And all we've seen in the second half, Sarah McKenna just cutting a very good line. So five tries for England. What will Simon Middleton's report card be saying today? Or at least if you were writing it. I think, oh, you don't want to know about mine. I think he'll be, um, I think he'll be a bit mixed, actually, Martin. You know, they built this game up. Ireland were the only other, you know, unbeaten team. They really, really built it up. You know, he, he selected a strong, you know, strong starting team. And they'll be, they'll be happy with, you know, aspects of this game. But there have been, there have been a number of errors in this match. And, um, I think they'll want to tidy up a few things. They will be pleased with the scrum. Um, there was that one scrum that Ireland powered over, but generally they've been pretty good from England today. An area that they did need to did need to improve on, let's say. Are our jackets still out here? No. <laughs> you are. I think she's a bit of a shy one, isn't she? Pardon? Still a little more than five minutes to go. England making sure they're keeping warm as Sanenaupu is being treated. I'm sure her husband George is, uh, if he's not here, he'll be watching at home. Once again, every precaution being taken to ensure she's uh, getting the best possible treatment out here. Lindsay Pete, who was uh, fairly early on in the match we know she went off to hospital so it's not been a great day on the injury front for Ireland and another really key influential player for Ireland as well as they say in Yorkshire it's a bit of a parky afternoon still got a bit of a thumbs up there here's a telling statistic from uh, attacking play look at that England five yeah. line breaks Ireland unable to make one and that has been the story plenty of possession plenty of territorial advantage but they just haven't been able to break down that English defensive line yeah absolutely you know they recycled the ball well they as you said they you know retained possession just no real firepower no difficult questions asked with this England defense He's all right, isn't he, lad? Look at him, all wrapped up. You've got Batman. <laughs> yeah, it's been a tough old um, championship so far for the organisers. Scotland have uh, been particularly badly hit. As we see coming on there, uh, Aoife Doyle, who will replace Seninaupu. Scotland, who uh, had to reorganise their second match in the last round, taking it from Scotston on the Sunday to uh, Murrayfield on the Monday, and now they've made the long trip to, uh, to Italy. And that game postponed yeah, this really. afternoon, which... Uh, it's a terrible shame. 
quite difficult, isn't it? Quite, quite unsettling. And uh, of course, Scotland, along with Italy and Ireland, actually having to be on this tournament, look towards World Cup qualifying in September. That would be in the back of Adam Griggs's mind as well. They want to put a run of good performances in this tournament leading into that. Yes, that game that was due to kick off in the next couple of hours on the outskirts of Milan. There are genuine concerns for coronavirus in Italy, and I was in, uh, in Rome yesterday for the men's match between Italy and Scotland and as we came into the country on Friday we were we all had our temperatures taken it's all part of a scanning process so uh, genuine concerns in that part of the world for the spread of coronavirus of course it is uh, in its own way a concern here as well but real need and necessity for vigilance in Italy at the moment well, there really is and it'll be interesting to see if that impacts any other part of the tournament England due to be out there for their for their last game so Sonny Naufu being helped off second time we've had that sight today involving an island player let's hope it's not too long before she's back on her feet and ready to play rugby again. I really hope not. She's been playing such great rugby, really playing with confidence and uh, made that play for the famous barbarians. Move who? So the Red Rose is on their way to a sixth straight test victory. Last time they lost was to the Black Ferns in the Super Series in San Diego. That was in July, so the temperatures down there in Southern California. A bit, uh, bit warmer than they are here in South Yorkshire today. Natasha Hunt on there to Poppy Cleal. Here's Hunt. Carry forward there from Shauna Brown, another of the Harlequins here, earning her 16th cap. The captain, Hunter. Harrison. Oh, great hands there from Scarrett. Bit of a chance here for Emily Scott. Cleal. So, can England finish with a flourish? Detaisha. Harper getting the ball in hand there. Is Harrison. Once again, the ferocity of Ireland tackling, not letting up at all. You have to admire it. And now they've turned it over. And the Considine finding some space. Back goes Harrison. Some space for England. Scott. Hunt on there to Harrison, who took a couple of grabs. Oh, it's got a bit too much on it. An unforced error from the replacement fly half. Yeah, just overkicked it a little bit. There was some nice space in that corner of the pitch. Just misjudged, misjudged the kick from Harrison. Irish players just having a bit of a conflap. So Hunter asking the question. Girls, how many? We're down Ireland just checking on the numbers. Here we go. We have a quorum. Taken forward by Feely. The carry that time from Dorothy Wall, one of the Munster players in this Ireland squad. And the Ireland player getting herself a little bit isolated there, Dorothy Wall. 
Holding on again, wasn't it? Another holding on penalty. Both teams have been guilty of that today. Just England in there so early. Dana McLean there, I think, it's a really good play. I think also Amy Cocaine was straight all over it, wasn't she? <laughs> I don't know how Dana McLean would be over it. She's gone off, hasn't she? Well done, Catherine. <laughs> That's Amelia Harper feeding the ball on. Hunt. Harrison. Scott. Just falling over her own feet in the end. Hunt again. That's Shauna Brown. Last minute of the match. England have been a bit quiet in this second half. Powerful carry there from Detaisha Harper, making her test debut today. Yeah, the errors have been creeping in. It was uh, a clinical and professional performance in the first 40 minutes, but it's been a little off key in the second. It has been scrappy, hasn't it? And have been able to play with their sort of normal fluid tempo. And, you know, part of the credit has to go to Ireland for that, for their strength and defence on the whole. Just not quite Crash. getting their timing Three. right, are they, in the back line? Passes Five. going behind, Five. drop passes. Set. There is Zoe Harrison. Pick up from the captain, Griffith. Can Ireland get off the mark? That's Tyrrell. They've got to cover something like 60 metres if they are to do it. But look at the commitment here from Ireland. They haven't let up. And there was a little knock on. And that will bring the final whistle from the referee, Holly Davidson. It has been clinical from England. For the second time in two straight test matches, England have not conceded a point. They've beaten Ireland by 27 points to nil.